Welcome to Bigfoot, Terror in the Woods, Sightings and Encounters. I'm your host, W.J. Sheehan. Hello, everybody, and thank you for taking some time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes with me. The following account is entitled Taken. The following story is one of those that had been received and told to me with such sincerity and intensity that I had to pass it along to you. It's not always what is seen that can send a chill down one's spine as you will soon find out for yourself. You will now be hearing the story as it was told to me by Tim Strong, a resident of the state of Virginia. As I told you before, Bill, this story scared the living crap out of me when I first heard it. I thought it would be something that you may well be interested in, so here goes nothing. My friend and co-worker Roberto and I were doing a four-day hike through the Shenandoah National Park in Virginia. Along this Appalachian Trail, there are actually some accommodations in place for the weary hikers. There are small locked trailside cabins which can be reserved in advance, located in several locations. They contain bunks, mattresses, blankets, cooking utensils, and many other necessities. In addition, there are many three-sided shelters in which there are bunks and an outdoor fireplace for warmth and cooking. It's relative to one of these three-sided structures that our story will unfold. Now, these three-sided shelters are a shared commodity. In other words, if you are in there and a couple of other hikers come along to crash for the night, you're obligated to welcome them in and make the best of it. Everyone deserves shelter for the night, and it may be many miles before coming across another one on the trail. So Roberto and I, having planned to make it to this certain shelter for the night, had arrived at the location finding it already occupied by a husband and wife. Having made all of our apologies for having nowhere else to crash for the night, they said that there were no apologies needed. In fact, they said, we are rather happy that you came because some strange happenings have gone on here and we weren't looking forward to being here alone tonight. Naturally, the question arose, what exactly are the strange happenings of which you speak? Before I continue, let me say that these are in fact three-sided shelters. They have a roof with two sides and a back and one side being completely open to whoever and whatever may come along. We were, by the way, spending the night in the shelter by Loft Mountain. The couple went on to tell us that some two years ago, a group of four hikers was doing exactly what we were doing, just south of us in the shelter by Big Flat Mountain. Upon awaking in the morning, one of the group of four was no longer in the shelter. Her backpack was left behind. The couple went on to say that over a period of days, a large search had been undertaken for the missing girl that came up empty. It was some several weeks later, near the border of West Virginia, many miles away from the location of the disappearance, that a man walking through the woods came upon the body of the girl draped over the upper limb of a large tree, naked and having been partially dismembered. After they had told us this story, I couldn't sleep a wink during the night. In the morning, as we got about the business of resuming our hike, my friend Roberto, who is a half-mad rebel from Central America, gets the boneheaded idea that we should go south and spend the night at the very shelter where this event had taken place two years ago. I told him he was out of his mind, but after much back and forth about it being a freaky thing to do and this and that, 
I had succumbed to the plan, and off we went. Having arrived there, it was basically a duplicate of where we had been last night. Only this night, he and I were alone. As the sun set and the evening turned into the night, I had basically been up for well over 24 hours, having not slept at all during the night. To be quite honest with you, I wasn't too keen on falling asleep there that night. It must have been around midnight when I looked at Roberto and he was sound asleep. This guy could fall asleep during a blizzard sitting on a curb and yet I was still awake. It wasn't just that we had heard the story about what happened here, but to me there was most certainly some type of creepy residual aspect about being here. I was uncomfortable the entire night, feeling as though we were being watched. By whom or what, I can't tell you, but I just couldn't shake it. Speaking for myself, the sun couldn't come up soon enough, and I was sorry that I had listened to Roberto's rant about wanting to come here. He was asleep, and I was being mentally tortured for the entire night in the shelter. Nothing had happened during the night, and we commenced to finish our hike in the morning. The question which lingers to this day in my mind, and I would guess in the minds of many others, the question which was the reason for my contacting you in the first place is this. Exactly who or what is capable of taking a human being many miles away, only to dismember them and put them up in a tree for safekeeping? That's what really blew my mind about this whole affair. Until next time, remember, always carry more gun than you think you're going to need. Sleep tight.